Hey guys, welcome back to another plant shop vlog where I show you guys all the behind the scenes of how I run my plant store from my home. Today is Sunday, we have some orders to pack. I did a small restock on Thursday, so these orders are from Thursday till today. Friday morning, I did ship out a few plant accessory orders. I do only ship plants out on Monday and Tuesdays, sometimes Wednesdays if you live in New Jersey, the same state as me, because you'll get it most likely the next two days or a day. But if it's plant accessories, I will either ship it the same day, as long as it's before the orders get picked up for the day, or I will ship it the next morning. So on Thursday, we got a couple. So I did pack up a few non-plant orders on Friday and send them out. A lot of the orders did consist of the acrylic plant display cases, which I did finally get them back in stock last week. So we have those again. I've kind of been shipping them out every day Day between my shop and Etsy. My Etsy has been picking up quite a bit since the last few weeks of me like actually having things on there. I've had an Etsy since I think 2022 and I really never really put that much effort into it until this year. I've always worked strictly off of my own website. So it is possible to run a business without Etsy, but Etsy does help a little bit when it comes to traffic. So now that the updates are out of the way, let's move on to what sold this week. First, we have this little Monstera Thai Constellation. We have Hoya Bella Lewis Boys, Hoya Rang Sang. We have Anthurium Hoffmanii. It does have a brand new inflow. So I'm gonna make sure I wrap this really secure. So in case the new owner wants to do anything with it, it should be fine once they unbox it. We have a Hoya Sunrise here. Philodendron Bromarks Fantasy. This is a little starter plant. Syndapsis Silver Hero. Two Philodendron Brandy Starters. Philodendron El Choco Red. This is the giveaway plant for the giveaway that was happening on Instagram. Congratulations again to all the winners because there was three winners, but congratulations to the winner of this plant. I'm going to be shipping that out this week as well to them. We also sold some trellises. We have the large U shape here, and then we have two of these small round ones. We also have some plant pots. This is a nine inch pot. We have two six inch pots and two five inch pots. We have a bag of my custom pond mix here. We also sold quite a few of our seedling trays. We have them in clear and black. And then we also have three of our acrylic display cases here. So let's go ahead and pack all these orders so that they can be shipped out tomorrow.
today is Wednesday and as you can see we have a plant shipment this week this is a smaller shipment from my newest wholesaler I talked about it a few vlogs back I'll put the link at the top I recently found a new wholesaler in addition to the one that we currently have this greenhouse does specialize in anthurium so that is mostly what we have today I think that there is two philodendrons in here though but the rest of it is anthurium I'm mostly going to be using this wholesaler just for their anthuriums because they have a lot of hybrids different seedlings and things like that so I do have two wholesalers now which means I am going to be doing two shipments a month one from these guys and then one from the original and actually next week the other plants are coming as well from the other greenhouse so I'm going to have a very busy next two weeks getting all of these plants ready this one isn't too many but the next one I did place an order for 65 plants which is a lot we'll see if we get all 65 so I'm glad that they didn't ship out at the same time because that means I would have had close to 100 plants to repot and stuff it would be a lot but I will talk more next week about the big shipment when we get it but let's focus on this one here I did just look at the final invoice it looks like there's about 17 so I'm assuming they didn't have some of the other ones that we got but I'm still excited to see everything a lot of these are actually hybrids as well so I will be putting the names of them on the screen for you guys. So the first one we have here, this is Anthurium Regal crossed with Anthurium Luxurians. Look at these beautiful dark leaves. This is so pretty and it's a nice size as well. Let's see the substrate that it's actually in. This is my second time ordering from this wholesale greenhouse. The first order was a small order just to kind of feel them out and test them just to see how they pack the order, how long it takes. And I was pretty impressed with everything. So I wanted to go ahead and make a larger order to see how they handle that. It looks like it's just in regular potting soil, which doesn't really matter because I'm going to repot it anyway. But here is another look at this. And here are the leaves on the back. So this greenhouse does have a much smaller selection compared to the other one. So I don't really plan on using this as my main ordering greenhouse because this is going to be just for some different like anthuriums and collector plants and stuff like that. Things that the other greenhouse doesn't really sell. I always do try to have a mixture of plants on my shop from common to rare to even like really rare. Everybody collects differently and no matter what you collect and how much your collection is, it doesn't matter. But as a store, I do like to have a mixture of things. So that's why I think it's a good move to have an additional wholesaler for some of these like collector plants and things like that. This is another hybrid here. I don't know how to pronounce the first anthurium, but this is a Bessier AF hybrid with something else. It does have only two leaves, but it's very unique. It has a very narrow leaf. I really like that. And this is the newest here. So at the moment, it does only have two leaves. And here we have a anthurium Bessier AF. Very nice leaf shape. This one did get a little rip, but that's all right. It has those beautiful dark leaves. I really do like the Bessier app. I think it's a really gorgeous anthurium and it is like velvety as well. So it is really pretty. So this one is a philodendron. I did only get two of them. They do have other things besides anthuriums, but um, a lot of it I can get at the other greenhouse. So I just prefer. I haven't seen this one in a while on the other greenhouse list. So this is philodendron Patrice. I've had these on the shop in the past. You guys love these. So I wanted to go ahead and get them again. This is a really nice size too. Not too small, not too big. Have a little bit of a damage leaf here, but nothing too crazy. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. This one's actually growing in moss. Wasn't expecting to see philodendron in moss, but here we are. Hopefully it's not too much of a hassle to untangle the root. I've just really never been a fan of moss. It is just not my favorite substrate to use just because of how tangled up the roots get and stuff like that. And personally, I just don't think it works for me and my plants. So this is a, another hybrid. This is a anthurium queen hybrid with another anthurium. Here we have it. This is what it looks like. It has two leaves. It's pretty tall, small leaves, but pretty nice. This one is in the process of unfurling. Hopefully it makes it. It looks like it was a little crushed in the shipment, but this is what it looks like. I also wanted to apologize for not posting a vlog last week, you guys. I'm so sorry, guys. I just needed a break, like from posting. I didn't post anything on YouTube. I didn't post anything on Instagram, like nothing. I just needed a little bit of a break. And I think a lot of it, is from my regular job. I'm like really, really exhausted from regular work. There is just a lot happening 
and it's causing me to work really, really late hours and stuff like that. And I just feel like I'm not getting enough sleep. So I just took a few days to just kind of rest and not worry about filming and editing and things like that. The reason I only do one video a week on YouTube is because it takes me a really long time to edit because I have to find the time for it. Usually I edit at night and when I am editing these vlogs, it can take me anywhere from eight hours to more than 16 hours. So yeah, I just needed a little bit of a break just from everything. I do feel a little bit better and a little bit more refreshed. I did get some sleep, but definitely like my regular job is picking up a lot and now um, we're getting close into spring. My shop is picking up a lot. I'm having a lot of new customers, which I am very grateful for and thank you guys so much. At the end of the day, I do have to focus on my job and my shop so if that means you know skipping a week here and there for a youtube video that's what it's gonna have to come down to so we have another one of these bessier app hybrids here this is the same as the other one as you can see we have that leaf here we have a new leaf here and we have one that's on the way out which is not a big deal and then we have this one and it does have that really nice narrow leaf this one's a really nice one. This is a nice size too. So this one is Anthurium crystallinum crossed with Anthurium pedatum. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. This one has some really nice leaves. This is what it looks like. Very pretty. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven leaves, very nice. And here is another look at it. It's really pretty, a nice size as well. This is another Anthurium Queen hybrid, just like the one from earlier. It has two leaves as well. When it comes to wholesale with plants, usually the plants are around the same size. However, they're grown, they're usually all grown at the same time, in the same place, same environment. So they all tend to grow the same. So when they pick the plants, they just pick grower's choice because they basically all look alike. This one here, this is Anthurium crystallinum crossed with Anthurium bessier F. I have one of these already in my collection and I love it. It gets really, really big too. And this is the other philodendron Patrice right here. And it's similar size to the last one. This one is a nice leaf here. It is really pretty. It's a really nice philodendron too. And just like the last one, this one is in moss too. And we have another big one here. This is the same as the other one. This is Anthurium crystallinum crossed with Anthurium pedatum and very similar size to the other one. Nice big leaves and has a nice amount of leaves as well. And this one is another Anthurium Bessier F. This is a two leafer. This is a Anthurium Queen crossed with Anthurium Waterburyanum. Personally, I think I prefer the Anthurium Queen hybrids over just the Queen itself. The Anthurium Queen itself is a very finicky plant and I would definitely say it's not a beginner friendly Anthurium at all. But in my experience, I found that the hybrids are way easier to care for. I guess they are more hardy, I guess. I don't know. So if you are in the market for like an Anthurium Queen, maybe take a look at the hybrids because they might be a little bit easier for you if you're a little bit intimidated. Also, there are so many different variations of Anthurium hybrids out there in general. It's a lot of fun collecting them because you can cross so many different kinds. Anthurium hybrids are definitely something that I've been looking into more and I've really been enjoying like learning more about them and even collecting them myself. Now this one here is Anthurium crystallinum crossed with a Anthurium luxurian. I've been trying to get some regular Anthurium luxurians on the shop, but every time I order them from the other greenhouse, they always sell out, so I never get one. And I think this is as close as we're gonna get with these hybrids. I am happy to bring at least some type of luxurians to the shop, but this crystallinum crossed with the luxurians looks really good. Honestly, everything looks great, very healthy. Um, no issues at all. Everything looks fine. So I'm pretty impressed again with this shipment and this one looks really nice. This is another Anthurium Regal crossed with Anthurium Luxurians, another Luxurians hybrid. Really nice textured leaves too if you're into the textured look. And this one here is another Crystallinum crossed with Bessier Ash. I definitely feel like we have some really nice Anthurium hybrids this round. They all look really great. Very impressed. No like broken leaves for the most part. Everything looks healthy and fine. I'm going to put them in a bin tonight and spray them down with insecticidal soap as a just in case, you know, you never know. You should always be cleaning your plants when you first get them. You never know. So yeah, that 
that was everything. I really liked everything. I think everything looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and get these situated and then I'm going to check in with you guys in the next few days to start repotting them and start prepping on restocking the shop as well. Lately, I have an issue where I just cannot sleep. I think a lot of it comes from just having a lot of stress and also just having a long list of things to do in my personal life, my regular job, and my shop. So I just cannot sleep and here we are at 5 a.m. repotting plants. I got up at 5 a.m. and I was just laying in bed scrolling so I figured I would just get up and get some stuff done. I had a lot going on this week and I just did not have the time like I usually do when it comes to my shop. So honestly, getting up this early and getting things done wasn't that bad. So anyway, I was repotting all the plants and for the most part, everything looked pretty good. There was a few issues of some root rot, but it was mostly dry root rot, not like wet. There was only one plant that had like wet root rot, which is definitely the worst type of root rot in my opinion. I would much rather deal with dry root rot over the wet. So for the dry root rot, it's not that big of a deal. You can usually just trim it off and the healthy roots will be fine. When you have root rot from overwatering, that's when you have more of an issue. That plant in particular, it was one of the bigger ones. So I'm only going to be putting one of those up on the shop this week The other one is the one with root rot obviously So i'm going to just put that one to the side and wait for it to recover because I obviously don't want to sell a plant with root rot But as i'm recording this voiceover it has been a few days and the plant honestly looks fine I'm just going to wait a few more weeks until I start seeing those fuzzy roots But other than that everything else was pretty good. So not too many complaints I ended up finished repotting everything around like 7 15 Which was perfect because I actually start work at 7 30 and then on saturday I finished prepping for the restart which you guys will see in the next couple clips.
It's Saturday morning, it's almost the afternoon, but I'm gonna be working on just cleaning up the plants now and getting them ready for pictures. I'm gonna get all that done today. I always do pest tree all of the plants that I get for the shop. When I first get them in, I will unbox them. And then that same day, I will give them a spray front and back with the insecticidal soap, just in case there is anything on there. Then I will repot all the plants and check all of their roots to make sure that they're healthy. While I was repotting the plants, some of them did have some root rot. It was mostly root rot from being underwatered. You can get root rot from underwatering and overwatering. There was one in particular that was from overwatering. When that happens, I just simply trim the root rot off. It's, you know, not that big of a deal. As long as it's not like stem rot, I'm not really too worried about it because roots will always grow back. Um, when it comes to like something like stem rot, you're in a little bit more trouble because it can just keep getting worse and worse and then you could be left with nothing at some point. Uh, luckily it was just some root rot. So I did just trim some of the roots that had it and I am gonna just keep them to the side, keep an eye on them for the next few weeks. And then once I start seeing those fuzzy roots, I will list them on the shop. So it wasn't like anything too crazy, but it was enough for me to, you know, not list them on the shop. So that's why it is so important for me to check all of the plants because you really just don't know. A plant's appearance can look great by just looking at it, but you kind of do need to understand what's going on in the pot. And that's another reason why I am very into just clear pots in general. That's why I sell them and that's why I use them myself because it's easier to understand what's going on with your plant when you can see it. So that's why I prefer clear pots just because I can always know what's going on. And it helps me as a store know when a plant is ready and is doing better because then I can see those fuzzy roots coming in and that allows me to know that the plant is ready to be sold. Overall, the plants look great. I'm very happy with them. I'm happy that I'm able to bring some of these really cool anthuriums to the shop because I just wanna be able to get these hybrids really at my other greenhouse that I shop from. Another thing I did off camera this week was I reorganized my shelves where I keep all my plant pots and plant accessories because I had to make room for the display cases. So now I have like a dedicated space for them up here and then the rest of them, I am keeping them in the garage until I need to restock them up here. And I also did reorganize the pot shelf because there was like a lot of open space. So I just stacked them together and stuff like that. And I had to restock some of the smaller ones. So I did that. I also cleaned out my shipping and supply closet. It did take me a little while, but I'm pretty happy with it. The thing about shipping plants is that you always need to have so many boxes on hand, like big and small. Boxes alone take up a lot of my closet space and that's something that's really important to me to know that like I always have a space for that kind of stuff. So I did recently order some other size boxes and I just didn't have the room for them. So I had to make room. So that's pretty much what I was doing this week off camera. And I'll show you guys that today when I'm finished with all the pictures because I did end up moving my Rudsta cabinet again. It's still upstairs in here, but I moved it to the other side and I moved my EXO on top of the Rudsta, which I prefer much more. I feel like it's more stable on top of the Rudsta. So I put a piece of wood underneath of it as well because it is a really heavy like uh, EXO. I wanted to make sure that it was stable and I think I like it more on top of the Rudsta. Planning on using the Rudsta for just anthuriums and the EXO is also gonna be for anthuriums. So yeah, I am still working on the Rudsta itself. I just have some big anthuriums in there right now. Nothing in there makes sense, so I'm probably not gonna show you because it looks a mess, but it's okay. It's gonna come along one of these days. I also watered the plants in here, so that's taken care of. There is really nothing on the shop shelves right now, like plant-wise, so I'm glad that I have these coming up this week on Thursday. This coming Monday, I am getting the big shipment of plants from the other greenhouse. So those will be coming up the following week as well. We'll definitely be stocked up again. So thank you for being patient. It does take me a little while to get the plants ready when I get them because I have to, you know, unbox them, repot them, clean them up, take pictures, and then actually update the shop itself. And I don't really show 
what it's like updating the shop itself because I don't feel like anybody's really interested in that. Doing a shop update like on the computer when I have to like manually make all the listings, it takes me a couple hours. So usually I do that on like Mondays um, at night or something like that after work or Tuesdays or something like that. And I'll just sit on the computer and I will just like watch YouTube and just get my shop updated and get it ready to go for that Thursday. But it definitely is a process like restocking my shop, making sure that everything is good to go and that it's ready for that Thursday. If I have the capacity and I have the time, I definitely would try my best to have like big restocks all the time, but it's just impossible because I'm just one person. So yeah, I have to be realistic and do things at my own pace because I don't have all the time in the world to do this. If I wasn't working my regular job, I would have a lot more time. Things would be a little bit different, but I personally choose to work my job. I could do this full time if I wanted to, but I'm not ready to be a full-time entrepreneur, I think. I actually like my job. I like what I do. You know, I like having my benefits and stuff like that too. So it's just not that easy for me to basically drop everything I worked so hard for in the company I work for. I've been with my company for 10 years. Um, it was like my first big girl job. I've had several different roles. I've learned a lot and I worked really hard to get to where I am now. As much as I would love to be a content creator and entrepreneur full time, I just don't think I'm ready for that yet. So yeah, maybe in the future, in the next couple years, something that I learned from running a business at home is that your business's growth is limited to your space. When I was in my apartment, I did great for what I had, but the moment I moved into my house and had more space and I was able to bring in more products and stuff like that and store them, my sales went up, I made a lot more money, and James and I have already been talking about possibly in the next few years that I'm gonna have to look for a dedicated space for this. I have been looking just to get an idea of what I'm looking for and how much it's gonna cost. I also like doing this out of the comfort of my own home because I do this on my weekends and after work. I don't know how I personally feel about finishing work at 7 p.m. and then driving into my office space or whatever and doing this. It's just like a little easier just like coming upstairs and being home, like, you know what I mean? But it's definitely something I'm thinking about for the future. And I would definitely want the office space to probably be within a five to 10 minute radius of my home so that I'm not driving, you know, really far because I don't even drive into work. I work from home. So I'm not used to going somewhere to work. I'm used to just being home. But yeah, that's definitely on my mind. And it's definitely a realization that I'm having that if I wanted to do better than I'm doing now, I'm gonna need a dedicated big space for this. So I have been looking at places. I don't want a storefront, so that's not what it would be. It would just be like either a warehouse space or an office space that's locked. If I did have local customers, I would allow them to schedule an appointment to come and pick up their items, um, but it wouldn't just be open to the public. That's not something I wanna do. Because right now I'm not doing local pickup. I know so many of you guys want me to. I just don't have the time in the day to meet up with multiple people because of my work schedule. Like I just, I can't, I can't do it. But if I had an office space and I was already there, then I would say, yeah, you can come. I'm leaving at this time or whatever like that. These are all just thoughts that I have and stuff like that too. Another reason why I'm considering a office space is because you guys know that I'm interested in possibly doing Amazon, which I've been doing research on and I've been down a huge rabbit hole about Amazon and stuff like that. A lot more complex than I thought. So I have to really decide what I'm gonna do with that because with Amazon, there's two ways for you to ship your products. You can either ship them yourself, so then your shop would be considered a fulfilled by merchant shop, which means I would personally pack up and ship my items, or you can have Amazon do it, and then your shop would be considered a fulfilled by Amazon shop, which means anything that I sell on Amazon, I have to ship it to an Amazon fulfillment center and let them handle it. So that means that obviously they would take a percentage of the sale and whatever, 
you know, that makes sense. They're doing the work for it. So yeah, there's two ways to do it. I think starting off, I would do it myself because I'm already used to packing up packages anyway. But if I do start Amazon, I know for sure that I would have to sell like my plant pots and stuff in a set. I'm not going to sell them just one pot per order. I would have to sell everything like in a set, like a five piece set or something like that, which is going to throw off my inventory levels that I have for the shop and Etsy. In doing that, I think I would have to order separate stock just for Amazon so that I know that I have the inventory for that. Because let's say that I have 100 plant pots that I bought for Amazon, right? But I wanna sell them in a 10 piece set. That means that that's literally only 10 orders. When you start selling in a set, it makes things a little bit more complicated and you have to order more inventory, which honestly, I just don't think I have the space for. Right now I have a lot of inventory in the garage, but I feel bad taking up the garage space because like James used that for his gym. So he told me to store everything in there, but it's just like, you know, it's gonna get to the point where my business is going to overtake the house. I literally don't know anybody who sells on Amazon. So I can't even like ask for like advice. Like I don't know. And then the other option on Amazon is drop shipping, which I am not trying to do at all. I feel like drop shipping is so complicated and it's also like risky. So I don't wanna do that either. A lot of shops are fulfilled by merchant. Usually when you get an Amazon package and it's not an Amazon packaging, like you'll see it like dropped off by UPS or USPS, that means that the merchant is fulfilling it. And that's why you don't usually get it the next day. You'll probably get it like two days later or something like that. That's because they're shipping it with a regular shipping carrier, not Amazon. Another thing that I'm a little nervous about selling on Amazon is that once I sell on Amazon, that's gonna open me up to a range of customers that can literally be an asshole. And I don't know if I'm ready for that because we all know how Amazon works. They will literally refund you or ship you out a replacement all the time, regardless of the situation. You know, people's packages get stolen from Amazon. Some people lie about it and Amazon is always going to believe the customer. And that definitely hurts like a small business because we don't get a say when it comes to Amazon customer service because now it's gonna be handled just by their customer service agent and then it's not gonna be in my hands anymore. That is also what comes with selling on Amazon, I guess, you know? So this is the last one and the one I just did before this, that is the one that had like really bad root rot. So I'm not gonna list that one. I'm just going to put it to the side. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about all these anthuriums. And if you're excited for all the anthuriums to come to the shop, I know we have um, a good amount of anthurium only collectors in here. So I'm happy to try to make sure that I have something for everybody, you know? I just got a notification on my phone that it's like a serious flood warning out here and we have somewhere to go tonight and I'm like just hoping that it's not really bad. We have to go to Philly tonight for somebody's birthday party. The one night that we actually are gonna go out, it's like freaking pouring rain. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm going to set up the backdrops for pictures. Here's all the orders from this weekend. I ended up packing them yesterday off camera. I was really busy yesterday cleaning the house and I was like in the middle of decluttering and stuff. I just wanted to just get the packing out of the way and not worry about recording. So here's all the packages. And we also did get two more packages overnight. So they're all here ready to go, ready to be picked up this morning. So here's the plant shop wall. There's not too much stuff on the shelves as you can see, but I did fill in some of the gaps with the anthuriums for this week. All the anthuriums that you guys saw in this video will be available as of today. So you guys can go ahead to the shop and check out the restock. I picked out a few more plants, like some Hoya starters and stuff, and a few other things that were ready in the propagation bin. I have these two Hoya sunrises here. These have enough roots to be potted in potty mix, so I went ahead and did that. It's a little 
little wet because I just put some water in them. And then we have this Hoya here. This is one of those big leaf Hoyas. I have like a couple more of those propagating as well. So don't worry, those will be back. I think I did actually order a few more anyway for this coming shipment because today, since it's Monday, I'm going to be finalizing the order for the big shipment and it's gonna be getting shipped out today and I should be getting it by Wednesday. So that order is a really big one. It was 65 plants. I'm hoping that we get all 65 but I would be happy to even get 50, you know what I mean? So we'll see what we got. But I did get a nice range of common plants, some Hoyas, and some more rare things as well, so I'm excited. And then down at the bottom, I did pick out a few plants that were in the rehab bin, and these ones are doing so much better. They have beautiful roots now, and they are just ready to go. This is a Monstera Aria here, and it has a new leaf coming in. I think I'm gonna wait until this new leaf comes in because I'm not sure if it's gonna be variegated or not. So we do have one of these probably coming up soon. I also picked out this really pretty Philodendron Red Anderson. This was a propagation. I believe this was a propagation off my personal plant, and that one has a lot of color. And here are some of the anthuriums that we got for this video. I just stuck them in the middle here, and I also just stuck some of the bigger ones on the top shelf here. So either today or tomorrow, I'm probably gonna work on the pictures, getting the listings done, and getting the shop update finalized and ready. Today is my cleaning day, so I'm gonna be just focusing on cleaning this room. I've already started reorganizing things this weekend, as I told you guys earlier in the vlog. I do keep majority of the plant pots in this room. If I do order a brand new box with like 100 of them, I will just keep it in the garage. But I did go through all the pots and restack them so that I can make some more space because I do have a shipment of eight inch pots on the way because apparently that is everybody's favorite between the shop and Etsy. The eights have gone so fast, so I needed to order a new shipment of those, so I should have those in a few weeks. I also added some of the display cases on this shelf here. So I had three shelves worth, but now I'm down to like two, so I'm probably going to just refill this bottom one here um, once I go downstairs in the garage and see how much I have. And then at the very bottom, I have all the seedling trays in this box right here, and I have it organized in a way where it's just easy for me to pull it out and pull each piece out so that it's not like taking up too much space. So this works great for me just as it is. And then I put all of the moss holes by size in this little corner here because they fit perfect. So we have the smalls at the top and then the minis at the bottom. We do have those in three colors. We have clear, frosted clear, and white and they come in small and mini. Here is how everything looks. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and remember there is a restock that went live today so make sure you check it out. Bye!